Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sharad Balaji here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about an interesting case of a 11 year old boy with chronic headache. Before going to the current issue, what were the complaints that the child had? He is a known case of chronic interstitial lung disease, weighted lung biopsy, weighted whole exome sequencing, neither your lung biopsy nor your genetic analysis revealed any specific pattern of diagnosis. So he was branded as a case of an idiopathic interstitial lung disease. Four to five years back, he used to receive numerous immunosuppressive drugs. But right now, for the past three to four years, only on and off oral corticosteroids whenever he gets hypoxia. Apart from that, the child has been receiving hydroxychloroquine. Coming to the current issue. What is the current issue? The current issue is the boy has been suffering from on and off headache for the past two to three months. Apart from nose block and on and off nasal discharge, he did not have any visual issues or nocturnal headache or vomiting no seizures also, no altered sensorium. There are no focal neurological deficits. Since there are on and off nasal discharge which lasted for more than 14 days, a provisional diagnosis of bacterial rhinosinusitis, I repeat chronic bacterial rhinosinusitis was made, had he was started on amoxicillin and clavulanic acid combination at a dose of 80 mg per kg per day. But despite good adherence and adequate dosage and adequate duration, the child had not been responding to our antibiotic. Even after taking two weeks of antibiotic course, his headache persists. In fact, his nasal block increases. So what are all the possibilities right now? What is the problem? Again, let's repeat. What is the problem? He is a 11 year old boy, a known case of an interstitial lung disease on chronic hydroxychloroquine, on and off steroids, headache, chronic sinusitis, amoxicillin clavulanic acid is not working right now. This is the problem. What are all the possibilities? So a headache persists despite a good course of antibiotic. Why antibiotic was given? On and off nasal discharge and nasal block. Possibility. Since the child is on chronic hydroxychloroquine, we suspected any visual changes or color blindness, but we got an ophthalmology opinion which did not reveal any fundus changes or visual issues. So that was ruled out. Two is a can it be a connective tissue disorder? Usually connective tissue disorder or vasculitis should be considered whenever there is a multi-system involvement along with the skin, joint, mucosa, serosal involvement. Apart from nose block and interstitial lung disease, skin, joint, mucosa, serosa did not reveal any clues towards connective tissue disorder. So we did not do any vasculitis workup or connective tissue disorder or autoimmune workup. We didn't do. Can it be steroid induced hypertension? So I forgot to tell you the child has been on antihypertensives for the past six months. Despite extensive workup for hypertension, we did not get any clue. Is it a renal problem, urea, creatinine as well as Renal shadows with respect to USG all turned out to be normal. Angio to find out any vasculitis takayasu turned out to be normal. Electrolytic disturbances turned out to be normal. Tumor related issues turned out to be normal. The endocrine people and our nephro people concluded it as a case of essential hypertension. Why not steroid hyper induced hypertension? You, you can ask. The child is on on and off steroids, not on steroids for a prolonged period of time. So he is on nifedipin, but his hypertension is under control and it is less than the percentile for that particular age and sex. So steroid induced hypertension less likely, even though he has hypertension. 
we concluded essential hypertension after doing all necessary investigations and the child is not on chronic daily steroids to cause hypertension so it is less likely and it, that hypertension is under control with nifedipine can it be a complicated bacterial sinusitis yes it can be it can be but no constitutional symptoms like fever headache proptosis or any other thing can it be a mass yes it is a possibility it can be a mass involving your nasal cavity so these are all the possibilities we had in our mind or it can be a functional disorder he has been on many drugs he has been on many diseases. He has been investigated so many times. So, so many numerous hospital visits, numerous medications. We do consider functional headache as a cause. We sought CGC opinion, which also did not reveal any depression or some form of personality disorder. That was also ruled out. So, what is it actually? Since the child had nasal block, and a headache, not responding to a good course of antibiotic therapy, we sought ENT opinion. ENT people advised us to take CTPNS and they told that it can be a case of chronic rhinosinusitis. So we took CT paranasal sinuses, surprisingly, surprisingly. Look at this, surprisingly, we could see the left nasal cavity is filled with the mass or else I can say filled with the tissue. It is filled with the radio opaque material. And you have hyper intense lesions. You have hyper intense lesions in sphenoidal cavity, maxillary cavity and the ethmoidal cavity. All those sinus spaces are filled with, look at this, ethmoid is filled, maxillary is filled up, maxillary ethmoid as well as penoid are all filled up with the radio dense hyper intense material along with that there is expansion of the nasal cavity look at this there is expansion of the nasal cavity starting to erode or thinning out of nasal septum laterally and your uh, medially and your uh, medial wall of the orbit laterally it starts to expand and erode the wall what it is okay it is hyper uh, expansile mass is present the diagnosis from the radiology side is fungal sinusitis we really worried how can a fungal sinusitis can occur in an immunocompetent person their diagnosis were fungal sinusitis when we asked our doubt whether it is truly a case of fungal sinusitis Radiology people told us that whenever you get hyper intense soft tissue lesions in your nasal cavity, in your sinuses, along with an expansile mass like lesion, probably it is a case of fungal sinusitis. That is what our opinion is. You proceed further. So, their final opinion is fungal sinusitis. And we, when we approach the radiology department, they also wanted to take the child for surgery. When we asked them, is there any role for medications, antifungals or nasal steroids? They told that we are planning to proceed for surgery and surgery was done. What was the surgery? They suspected allergic fungal sinusitis and functional endoscopic sinus surgery with polypectomy, left orbital decompression along with samples in for analysis. We need to thank ENT and radiology department for that. Then comes a surprise to us. The sample was sent for histopathology as well as microbiology. Look at this, the histopathology revealed no growth of any bacterial pathogens. They used some special stains, gram staining as well as KOH mode. But there is scanty growth of aspergillus species. I repeat, scanty growth of aspergillus species with staining in histopathology. When it comes to histopathology proper, the report says that there is a lot of allergic mucin. There is a lot of allergic mucin, fibrous exudate, dense sheets of eosinophils, fibrin, mucin, 
eosinophils along with that fungal stain shows high branching fungal hyphae. You all know that branching fungal hyphae is nothing but if it is septated along with the uh, angulation, branching angulation at 45 degree more in favor of an aspergillus. Their final conclusion was probably it is a case of allergic fungal sinusitis. And morphology of fungal colonies are compatible with aspergillus. So advised morphology. We did so aspergillus both by staining as well as by histopathological examination. We did KOH mount, KOH mount fungal element scenes more in favor of aspergillus. What was the treatment given? As I told you already, debulking surgery was done by then. So after uh, extensive okay, literature, literature search, the child was put on intranasal steroids for about 4 weeks along with antifungal oriconazole. Why not fluconazole? Fluconazole doesn't have any activity against your aspergillus. So, oriconazole was given. Symptoms resolved. The child is on follow-up right now. His 10th month of his post-operative period is absolutely fine. No nasal, no nasal symptoms, no headache, no nasal block. Is it a really a case of allergic fungal sinusitis? Are we seeing so far in my 13 years of pediatric pulmonology, I have not seen any case of allergic fungal sinusitis. This is my first case. I don't know whether I have missed all those cases. So this is the criteria. What does the criteria say? Symptoms of chronic sinusitis. It means you need to have a nasal discharge, headache, nasal block, etc. Which should last for more than 3 months. Here, do you have all those findings? Yes, clinically the boy had. Presence of eosinophilic mucin. We had seen in our histopathology report that there were eosinophilic mucin present in the histopathology. Non-invasive fungal hyphae. Okay, fungal hyphae is present. But since the report did not mention any hyphal elements in the mucosa or in the bone, we presume that it is a case of non-invasive fungal hyphae. They did not mention invasion. Why invasion? Invasion means present of hyphal elements in the bone or in the mucosa which were not mentioned there. Immunocompetent. He was on, he was not on immunosuppression in the recent past, only on and off corticosteroid. So we presume that he is immunocompetent right now. Characteristic CT finding as our radiology people told hyperintense signals, expansile lesions involving all parts. Sometimes it can cause proptosis too. Can, sometimes it can cause erosion of the nasal bone, erosion of the orbital bone. Yes, characteristic CT finding. In fact, radiologists were the first to mention about the possibility of fungal sinusitis in that case. Fungal species IgE demonstrated Characteristic finding, IG demo, we didn't do, we didn't do, okay, because of caste issues, we didn't do. So, this is a case of allergic fungal rhinocytis. Is it true? The answer is true. It is a case of allergic fungal sinusitis. Remember, almost 5 to 10 percent of chronic sinusitis in adults turned out to be allergic fungal sinusitis and in pediatric age group it is increasingly being recognized i repeat it is increasingly being recognized it is characterized by its allergic reaction of an immunocompetent child to the fungal antigens to the fungal antigen characterized by a respective histopathology respective radiological features i repeat it occurs in immunocompetent child they can mount an allergic response to all those fungal spores that they inhale. What is the treatment as per IDSA guidelines 2016? Tire 1, always you need to go for decompression, surgical debridement of all those fungal elements seen in the nasal cavity. So endoscopic sinus surgery, if at all there is a polyp, you need to remove it. 2. Ideally, each and every case of allergic fungal sinusitis should be followed by a course of intranasal steroids for about 
4 to 8 weeks. Is there any role for antifungal? To be very frank, ideally antifungals, any oriconazole or itraconazole are ne not necessary in a case of allergic fungal sinusitis. They will be required only when these cases relapses despite surgery and despite intranasal steroids. So ideally in our case antifungals should not be given but we had tried because we didn't have that knowledge at the time. What is the carry home from this case? Consider allergic fungal sinusitis in all uh, cases of chronic sinusitis not responding to adequate course of antibiotic therapy. As I, as I told already, it is increasingly being recognized across many parts of the world in India too. Characteristic CT finding is what? Hyperdensities in the nasal cavities. Bony erosions are there in favor of fungal rather than bacterial. We searched why there are bony erosions despite not being a case of invasive fungal infection. The answer is the area is filled with full of eosinophils. These eosinophils produce so many proteins that in turn causes destruction of the bone and not the fungal hyphae. Here the bony erosions are mainly mediated through eosinophils that is induced by your fungal hyphae and not directly due to the invasion of fungal hyphae itself. Because he is immunocompetent, the fungal hyphae can invade directly your bony cavities provided he is immunocompromised. Probably a case of chronic granulomatous disease or severe combined immunodeficiency or post bone, more, bone marrow transplant status or a case of leukemia. In those instances, your immunocompression can directly lead to fungal invasion. But here in our child is immunocompetent. Endoscopic sinus surgery is the treatment of choice. Surgical debridement is the treatment of choice. Followed by intranasal steroids for about 4 to 8 weeks to prevent relapse. Remember, antifungals are necessary only in invasive allergic, invasive fungal sinusitis. I am sorry, not allergic sinusitis. And it occurs usually in the presence of immunosuppressions. In normal immunocompetent children developing allergic fungal sinusitis, antifungals are not necessary. Ideally, what is this? It is nothing but the representation of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, which usually occurs in immunocompetent child in the presence of cystic fibrosis or asthma. The, your ABPA is nothing but the allergic manifestation of your body to all those exposed anti, uh, all exposed fungal antigens. In the same way, allergic rhinofungal sinusitis is due to the body's reaction to all those fungal antigens. So this is from my site for today. Thanks for your patient listening. Bye-bye.